Okay, here are the NPCs that I will be covering in part 2, the rewards for each quest, and the timestamps for each one. Before talking about the Kenneth Height and Nefeli Lu questline, I have to mention Gatekeeper Gostak. He is this guy that you meet right at the gates of Stormvale Castle. He will tell you about the opening in the castle and how you can sneak by undetected from that opening or you can tell him to open the gate and that's what he will do. He will tell the guards to open the gate and you can go in from the main gate. The guards don't know about it. You breach the castle undetected. Now he might seem friendly at the start, uh, but he is actually a bit of a schemer, let's just say. What he does is he loots corpses, and you are also not safe from this. Every time you die, he will come in and take 30% of your runes, and this is permanent. Every time you die, he will come in and take some of your runes. When you recover them, 30% of them will be gone. There's a few ways to stop this. Number one is just to go and kill him. Now, you might be tempted to do this. However, if you can keep him alive and keep him there in the castle, if you finish the quest for Nefeli Lu in Kenneth Height, he will actually have an ancient dragon smithing stone in his shop you can buy for 20,000 runes. So that's something to consider if you want to kill him. Another way of stopping him is by finding him or catching him in one of the three locations where he's stalking you. Throughout the castle, there are three locations where he will be trying to stalk you. Essentially, he's waiting for you to die to loot your corpse. And generally, once you catch him in one or two of these locations, he will stop. He's going to go back to the main gate and become a shopkeeper there, and he will sell you goods. The first location is very close to the Stormvale Cliffside Site of Grace. He's actually going to be behind that Site of Grace, beside the watchtower that's there. Uh, and he's going to appear once you go up the side path, the stairs that lead up to the Stormvale Castle. Once you go into the room that has the two servants that are sitting down there, once you make it to that room, he's going to appear next to that watchtower. You're going to go down and talk to him, and that's where he's going to have his dialogue and probably, most likely, stop following you around, or you're going to have to catch him once more. Oh, oh you. Oh, great. I'm glad you're here. Just... A small reward. I was saving it for you. Please, it's all yours. The second location is in the Rampart Tower. There is a site of grace there. Once you explore the castle a little bit, I'm not exactly sure what triggers his spawn. But generally, when I walk out to the Rampart Tower site of Grace and go explore the church that has Rogier in it, and once I come back, he's gonna be very close to the elevator that's inside the Rampart Tower. And the third location is above Sorcerer Rogier on top of the church roof. Oh, you. For God's sake, don't scare me like that. Oh. What? Oh, just clearing out some corpses? Can't just leave them about, you know? They'll start to pong, eh? Oh, hello. <laughs> no, it's my job to keep the grounds clean. Now, if you open the main gate of the hello? castle, that's going to stop him from Can't appearing in these three me. locations. And I'm pretty sure if you open the main gate from the inside, that will also stop him from looting your corpse and he's gonna open his shop. Perhaps you'd like to... Okay, now moving on to Kenneth Height and his quest line. You will first find him east of Mistwood Outskirts, Site of Grace. He's gonna be on top of these ruins. He will constantly yell out, asking for someone to help him. Once you go on top of the ruins, he will talk to you and he's going to introduce himself. He talks a lot, but essentially, in summary, he will introduce himself, talk a little bit of smack about Godric, 
and then he's going to ask you for a favor, and he's going to tell you to essentially order you to go and clear out his fort south of Mistwood, Fort Height. You might have heard of me, Kenneth Height. Next in line is the rightful ruler of Limgrave, Young Tarnished. I would have a boon of you. I want you to take back my fort. It lies to the south, beyond the Mistwood. And once you talk to him again, he's going to say, what are you waiting for? A kiss goodbye? And then he says, oh, you must be wondering about your reward. Fret not. The great Kenneth Height is known for his considerable largesse. The celebrations will be lavish indeed. Essentially what he's saying is, once you get in on that Kenneth Height money, there's no going back. So of course, you, you will go and breath. clear out his fort. You Once you've done that, you will go back to the ruins and inform Kenneth Height that you've done what he asked. Now at this point, he's going to reward you well with this done. dagger, the well earth steel done, dagger, indeed. and then he's going to say I time for him to right move to back you. to the fort. Now, here's your reward, as promised. Go ahead, it's all yours. Now here, if you talk to him again, he will give you an offer to enter into his service and become one of his knights. Of course, you will accept and he will say he will await you in his fort and there they will hold a ceremony for your knighting. What say you? A fine accord, is it not? Very well, very well indeed. I knew I saw something in you. I shall await you at my fort. We shall hold the ceremony for your knighting there, I think. Now, once you go back to his fort, uh, there's going to be a bunch uh, of his favorite demi-human soldiers in the fort, and he's going to be standing there, fort. and he will be standing there on top of the castle. <laughs> Don't worry, they're they're okay. They're just sleeping behind him. They're, they're okay. Now, here he's going to talk about the sorry state of his castle, his fort, and how everything is a mess. They need to find a good ruler with proper lineage and such. And he says he must begin his search post haste. The great Kenneth Height issues his sincerest apology. But now, I must begin my search post haste for a true and stalwart lord of the proper lineage to take the reins of Limgrave. Now, let me tell you, he starts searching with an unbelievable amount of haste. Some might even say too much haste. I mean, this guy, this ruler, he, he, he could be anywhere. Maybe underneath one of these rocks, maybe behind that door. One thing's for sure, and that is Kenneth Height. He, he is looking, he is searching, and he will find this guy. Now, of course, I'm, I'm joking. Uh, he's gonna just keep saying that endlessly. He will go through almost the entire game and probably just here and there will come back to Kenneth Hyde and speak to him and he just says the same thing over and over and over again. Now, the only way to end this hasty search is to finish Nefeli Lu's questline and of course kill Margot. I'm a true. I must be you a true. I must begin my search post haste for a true. I must begin my search post haste for a true and stalwart law. I must begin for a true. I must. Now, Nefeli Lu, the first time you meet her is going to be inside Stormvale Castle's courtyard. You're going to meet her. She will introduce herself and talk about how she doesn't like Godric and what's going on inside this castle and in this land. And once you finish her dialogue, she's going to mention she's willing to offer her help when fighting Godric. And yes, she will be an available summon to help you during the Godric the Grafted boss fight. I am Nefeli Lu, tarnished and warrior like you. I'm here by decree of my father. How utterly repellent this is. This grafting of Godric's ill befits a lord. He's tainted the very winds. If you intend to challenge Godric, I ask you call upon me. After you have defeated Godric, the next time you will find Nefeli in the Round Table Hall. She will be there inside the library and will yeah, tell you to talk to her father. So and also, she will reward you with Nefeli. the Arsenal Chart. We met at Stonevale. I'm glad to see you here. I have something for you. I found it in Godric's grafting grounds. You were the one to defeat him. I would hazard. Make good use of it. I don't intend to make a habit of scavenging corpses. 
you can talk to her again and she will mention she has another task at hand and she will be leaving very soon. It's about time I headed off. I'll see you again, warrior, should the fate stain it. Once you rest or fast travel to any location, she will also move. The next location, she will move to the village of the Albanorix and she's gonna be there on the path that leads up to the village. Oh, it's you. Well, what do you make of it? What's happened to this village? I witnessed a sight much the same in my infancy. The oppression of the weak. Murder and pillage unchecked. A waking nightmare made by men. But this time, I'm a woman grown. And though the suffering cannot be undone, I can still mete out justice. Justice to the oppressors. To help her dish out this justice, you're gonna have to move up and get to the bridge that's directly above her. Once you go to the other side of the bridge, there will be an omen killer enemy there. You can summon Nefeli for this fight, or you can just do it on your own. Once you kill the omen killer, you will have to go back to the round table hold. Once you are in the round table hold, you're gonna go to the stairs that is very close to the blacksmith. You'll go down those stairs and there you'll find Nefeli. Ah, you. Please. Leave me be. It's pathetic, I know, but I... I need to think. Now, what you need to do is go back and talk to her father. Well, what is... Ah. You've already heard. Indeed. It seemed the whelp harbored suspicions. So I had no further use for her. Honestly, what's a man to do? A determined plebeian is more wicked than an omen horn. Quite frankly, I suspect that's just what the Queen wants. A dose of ambition to incite the tarnished. Once you've done that, go back and talk to Nefeli, and she's going to keep on being sad. For the next step, you're going to need to find the Stormhawk King and then give it to Nefeli. To find the Stormhawk King, you're going to have to go to the Chapel of Anticipation. To do this, you're going to have to go to the Four Belfries and use one of the way gates that's there. To use the way gates, you're gonna need an item called the imbued sword key. There are three of these things. The first one is gonna be inside a chest at the four belfries. The next one is going to be in the Royal Lucaria Academy. If you don't know where that item is, you can use this footage to help you find it. And the last one is going to be inside a chest in Celia Town of Sorcery.
once you're at the Chapel of Anticipation, uh, just go to the same building where you started the game. There's going to be these stairways that leads up, and there you're going to find the Stormhawk King. Once you have the Stormhawk King, you will go back to the Round Table Please. Hold and give that Please item to Nefelic Loot. Now, remember, you won't be able to give her the Stormhawk King if you still haven't unlocked the ability to upgrade Spirit Ashes for Roderica. She needs to be able to upgrade Spirit Ashes for you to be able to give the Stormhawk King to Nefelic Loot. Also, there is a potion that Preceptor Celevis gives you. This is something for his quest. If you want to progress and finish Nefelilu's questline, you should not give the potion to Nefelilu. Once you give her the Stormhawk King, she's gonna say this reminds her of her first hawk. And she starts sniffing the ash. And this is what she's gonna do endlessly, of course. Just like Kenneth Hyde, she's gonna start huffing ash, just getting high on that ash and continues to do so until you kill Marga inside the capital. Once you've done that, now you can finish the entire questline for everybody, involving Gostock, Kenneth Hyde, and Nefelelu at the same time. How could I say that? Father has always given me his guidance. And now... I've lost it. Is that ash? I can smell the ancient storm in it. My thanks. I'll gladly take it. I'm not like Roderica. I don't feel the presence of spirits, let alone see them. Still, this ash, it reminds me of my first hawk. Thank you. In this ash, I can smell the ancients. It reminds me of my first hawk. Once you've done all the steps for Kenneth Hyde's quest line and Nefelelu's quest line, all you have to do is go back to the Godric the Grafted Site of Grace. You will rest there and Gostock, Kenneth Hyde, and Nefelelu, all three of them will teleport into the throne room. And that is where you will finish the quest line. Nefelelu will reward you with an ancient dragon smithing stone. If Gostock is alive, he will also have one in his shop, you can buy it for 20,000 runes, and this is where the quest for everybody ends. Now remember, if you go to the god of the grafted site of grace and they're still not there, rest there once and they will spawn. I will call upon the storm to drive away the foulness that has settled on the winds. Again, I am Nefeli Lu, warrior. Some call me by the title of Lady, but I remain the same woman underneath, though I have now abandoned my former guidance. I cannot express how much you've helped me. Should you become Elden Lord, I would gladly lighten your burden. Farewell, fellow warrior. I will remain to summon the storm, but your guidance and your fight surely lie elsewhere. Still? I have the lady's trust, so I can loot all the corpses I like. <laughs> I'll let you take a look at the good. Sorcerer Thops. You will meet this guy inside the church of Irith, very close to the lake facing cliffs site of grace. Now once you talk to him, he will introduce himself and he's gonna say, although it might not look like it, this guy actually studies sorceries in the academy of Rhea Lucaria. Now he says for a small donation of 10 runes, he will teach you some sorceries. Now he's sitting in some ruins looking a little sad. He's saying he'll show you some tricks for a, a little bit of runes. I mean, you, you hate to see it, but full-blown under-the-bridge activities is going down. Uh, when you give him the runes, he's gonna say, uh, if only he could make it back to the academy, and for this he needs a key. There are two academy keys in the game. One is outside the academy, and that's the one that you need yourself. If you offer this one to him, he won't accept it because he knows you yourself need that one. The other one is inside the academy, and you can use this footage 
to help you find that one. Once you found the key, you can go back to Sorcerer Thops, you will give him the key, he will thank you, and he says finally he can move back to the academy. And that's what he's gonna do, once you rest or fast travel, he won't be in the church anymore, and he's gonna move back to the academy. Now before you also go back to the academy to find him, uh, just go back to the site of grace that's very close to the church and rest a couple of times there. Once you do that, a new teardrop scarab is gonna spawn inside the church, you can kill that and you will get the Ash of War Thops Barrier. Now unfortunately he does not make it, once you go back to the academy you can find his body, from his body you will get his bell bearing, an Academy Glintstone Staff, and the Sorcery Thops's Barrier. Also, before leaving, once you give him the key, he will reward you with the Erudition Gesture. Now, with the erudition gesture that you got from him, you can open up two magic seals in two different towers. One is going to be the converted tower southwest of the Lernia of the Lakes. All you got to do is just walk up to the statue of Marika and do the erudition gesture. Once you do this, a magical ladder appears. You will climb the ladder and then you will get a memory stone as reward. The next one is going to be Northeast, the converted fringe tower. Now for this one, same thing, you need to go up to the statue of Marika and do the erudition gesture. However, you need to also be wearing one of these glintstone crowns. If you've gone through the Rhea Lucaria Academy, you probably already have one of these things. They're not that hard to find. But if you do not have one, I will show you how to get one. It's very simple. One of them is very close to Sorcerer Thops' body. Once you have one of these, just wear them on your head. Do the erudition gesture and the seal will be broken. And that's going to be it for this quest line.
the very nice and very polite Raya. The first time you meet her is going to be in Lernia of the Lakes. She will call out to you. Once you talk to her, she says she's in a bind. A thug took her necklace. And then she asks if you can go and retrieve that necklace for her. The thug should be resting at an abandoned home down the way. Please, I must have the necklace back. To do this, all you have to do is head northwest and find the Boil Prawn Shack. And you will find the thug is your homie that sells you delicious seafood. To get the necklace, you can either buy it from him for a thousand runes, or you can just attack him, kill him, and that way you will get the necklace for free. That necklace, what you're after, is it? Mm. Well, show me what it's worth to you, and I'll consider parting ways with it. I'm not in love with it or nothing. You're a shrewd one, Chief. First, you hand me the runes, and don't try nothing, neither. Once you have the necklace, just go back to Raya, talk to her, exhaust her dialogue. She will thank you and then introduce herself. And she's gonna say, I work for Lady Tanith in the Volcano Manor, and we need people like you. And she will give you a invitation for the Volcano Manor. And then she says, if you prove yourself that you're not an ordinary tarnished, the Volcano Manor will extend its full invitation for you. Now, to do this, to prove yourself, what you have to do is make it to the Altus Plateau. You have three ways of doing this. One is going through the ruin-strewn precipice. You will go through those mines. Once you beat the boss, there will be a lift that it will take you up, and you will end up in the Altus Plateau. The other way is completing the medallion that you need for the Grand Lift of Dectus. Once you have that, all you have to do is just ride the lift up and then again you will end up in the Altus Plateau. The other way is the clue that Patches gives you. In the Raya Lucaria Academy, there is this abductor version. It's below the wheels, the giant wheels that's there. Once you find that, you have to let this thing grab you. You have to let this thing grab you, put you inside it, and then kill you. This will teleport you to the Volcano Manor. Once you go through this area, you will have to fight two abductor virgins. Once you fight those guys, once you take them out, again, you will end up in the Altus Plateau. Once you are in the Altus Plateau, there are two locations where you can find Raya. If you ride the Grand Lift of Dectus, right above the lift, there you can find Raya. And if you go through the abductor virgin hole or the virgin hole, <laughs> and if you go through that abductor virgin path or go through the ruin strewn precipice, you will have to go to the Lux ruins in the Altus Plateau, and there you will find Raya. Champions, I hereby invite you to the Volcano Manor. Take my hand and have audience with my mistress. Give me your hand. I will pray that you follow the same path as Lady Tanith. Once you make it to the Volcano Manor, you can talk to everybody there. And then, of course, there is Raya in there too. You can talk to her. She says she's happy that you made it there. And also she has this dialogue where she mentions the, these noises that she hears. Movement beyond the walls, breathing, slithering scales, these things. And of course, what this is, is giving you a clue about an illusionary wall that will lead to the prison town church. And this will be important for the next part of her quest. Any strange sounds here at the manor? Something beyond the walls? Like breathing or... Slithering scales. Oh, fie, what am I saying? It just is impossible. I must be tired. Sometimes I hate, like, breathing. Oh. Mm. 
once you have made it to the prison town church and also you have talked to lady tanith and started her quest line in her quest line you will have these contracts where you have to go and assassinate people once you have done the first assassination which is gonna be old knight istvan once you have killed old knight istvan after the first assassination and once you have found the prison town church and you have walked outside and actually seen what's going on out there you will go back to the volcano manor and there you will find raya in another room in her true form and you will find that she is actually a snake brave tarnished what is your business here i'm afraid this is not a guest room what's that peculiar look upon your face goodness Am I still a serpent? Oh, how dreadful. How dreadful indeed. Oh, forgive my distress. I ought to be thanking you for treating me as usual. Despite this appearance, Brave Tarnished, this is my true form. My real name is Zorias. Please forgive the deception. Do understand. This duplicity is my own doing. Lady Tanith speaks no falsehoods, and the Volcano Manor is just as it seems. Once you finish the dialogue with Raya or Zorias, you're gonna have to go Lady back Tanith and talk to Lady Tanith. And since we're talking about Lady Tanith, be careful. If you finish all of the assassinations for Lady Tanith, and if you get teleported to Rykard, this is gonna lock you out of the quest, the rest of the quest for Raya, because Lady Tanith is not gonna have the dialogues related to Raya. And this is just gonna stop the entire thing. Did you see her? The girl, Raya, with her true face. Mm. Well, if she confided in you the name Zarias, then perhaps it is not my place to speak. But as her adoptive mother, I ask of you, please be kind to her. Look after young Zarias. Her true visage belies the purity of her heart. Honestly, I hardly deserve the sweet child. The next time you talk to Raya, she will be in her human form. Here she's going to talk about how during the night she saw something move into the room next door and then never came out. And then she asks, is there something, some secret inside the volcano manor that she does not know about? And of course, if you made it to the prison town church and you explored, you went outside and you saw what was going on out there, you can tell her about the secret that yes volcano matter has some hidden passage that leads to this place you can tell her about this and here she's gonna get really worried she's gonna start asking questions and she asks was she not born by the grace of a king discover anything would you please share really oh so there was a secret after all oh my lady tanith my own mother has deceived me. Was I not born by the grace of a king? If you cannot get the dialogue with Raya in her human form, what you need to do is just go to Lady Tanith and do the second assassination for her. After this, you can go back and talk to Lady Tanith and talk to her about Raya's worries and the questions she's asking. I should have known something was wrong. The signs were clear enough. Well, Zarias has placed her trust in you. All the more reason I must tell you that some things are better left unknown. Besides, no one should be blamed for their heritage. Think about it. We are resisting the ways of the Erd Tree itself. What matters one's lineage in such a crisis? After this, you're gonna have to go through the prison town until you make it to the Temple of Igalai or Igle. I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but you're gonna go there, defeat the Gatskin noble, and there you will find the Serpent's Amnion. What you have to do after this is just go back to Raya and speak to her and give her this item. Hmm. What is this? I remember this sense distinctly. Hmm. Funny, isn't it? I am certain of it. 
I was born inside this. It's a part of my birth, mother. You have my gratitude. Thanks to you, I am no longer afraid. I want to know how I was born and met Lady Tanith. One day, I hope to call her mother once again. This time from the bottom of my heart. Right after this, if you rest, Raya will go missing. She will leave the Volcano Manor and you will talk to Lady Tanith and she will also say the same thing. She hasn't seen Raya anywhere. She also has no scouting duties. And this is where Lady Tanith will start to get worried. If you follow, it cannot... No. I haven't seen Zarias anywhere. And she has no scouting duties now. Has she gone off in search of answers? Why won't she just listen? May I ask your aid? Not as the manor's proprietress, but as Zarias's mother. If she discovers the answer to her question, and it causes distress, have her drink this potion. To purge that which would cause her pain. Yes, my wish is a grave disrespect to her. No different than the Erd Tree's imposition. But I've no choice. It must be done. For the next part of the quest, uh, you need to find Raya. And in this footage right here, I will show you how to exactly get to her next location. Here you have three choices. Number one is to kill her, number two is to give her the tonic of forgetfulness, and number three is doing nothing until you kill Rykard. Once you kill Rykard, you can go back to her and talk to her and she realizes you're not gonna kill her. And this is gonna be the third ending. If you kill her, she dies and then she will drop the Dedekar's woe. If you leave her alive and then go kill Rykard and then come back and talk to her, she realizes you're not gonna kill her. You're not willing to kill me, are you? <laughs> You've always been so kind and uncompromising. I suppose I knew in my heart of hearts how kind and uncompromising you always were. If you rest and then come back to the area, she's not gonna be there. She leaves the talisman again for you and also a nice letter. If you give her the tonic of forgetfulness, she's gonna go to sleep. Drink this then. Yes, of course. You always 
were very kind. Delightfully sweet, and yet... And after Rykard is killed, and everybody in the manor has left, including Patches, that is also something you need to remember. You need to talk to Tanith, you need to talk to Bernal, and then talk to Patches. Everyone has to leave. Once everyone's left, Raya is going to be there inside the Volcano Manor. Talk to her, exhaust her dialogue. And then once you reset the area again, Raya will also disappear and you will get the towel. It's you. Heaven knows what happened here. But Lady Tanith and all the tarnished champions are gone. It feels rather quiet without them. But with you here, things will be just fine. I await Lady Tanith. I am her daughter. Born by the grace of a great king. I do not wish to burden her or cause concern. Brave tarnished. Do tread the path of valor. I'm certain that this is what Lady Tanith wishes. And that's it for Raya's questline. Right, Diablos. Now let's get this out of the way if you don't want to bother with his questline. When he is outside of the round table hold and outside of Volcano Manor, you can attack him and kill him and this will get you Diablos' mask and also his whip. Now for his questline, the first time you're gonna meet him is gonna be in the round table hold. He's gonna introduce himself and he's gonna talk about his servant. His servant is this lady called Lanya and she's gone missing. So he's gonna ask you if you've seen her. And if you do see her, he's gonna ask you to come back and tell him about it. She's my servant, but fickle as the wind. Take your eyes off her for but a moment and she's good as gone. If you find her, please be sure to tell me. Once you make it to the Lyrnia of the Lakes, you're gonna find him very close to the Academy Gate Town site of Grace. He's gonna be on top of a roof and he's found Lanya. You know, would you? The whereabouts of the hidden house of those despicable fiends. The recusants who hunt their fellow tarnished. They laid hands upon my servant Lanya, and I refuse to let the insult stand. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. I, Dialos, swear to deliver the message. They now, right after this, he's going to relocate to Round Table Hall. He's going to go back there. Once you talk to him, he's going to say, Oh, uh, the recusants, they have the gall, the audacity, the chutzpah to not only contact me, but also invite me to their hideout. Now I know the location, and that's where he's going to be headed. Just you wait, wretched recusants. You'll rue the day you insulted my name by laying hands on Lanya. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood, after all. Now, the next time you meet the guy, he's gonna be, of course, in the Volcano Manor. Once you meet him, you're gonna talk to him and he says, Oh, you also joined Volcano Manor, so now we're homeboys, right? You can, you can talk to him again and he notices. He's like, oh, okay, you're probably wondering about Lanya and my revenge and such. And then he comes up with this entire thing how Lady Tanith convinced him that he's got the stuff of champions and he's walking this path of glory. After much internal debate, I've come to realize revenge is not the answer. According to Lady Tanith, I've got the stuff of champions. And champions, ironic as it is, are oft forced to walk a tainted path. It hit me like a bolt from the blue that my former thoughts were simple naivety. Of course, my heart weeps for Lanya. That unfortunate incident was a cruel twist of fate indeed. But succumbing to the pain and sadness caused won't make me a champion, will it? And Lanya I'm sure this is the case, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the nice man in the suit of armor that stands right beside Lady Tanith. No connections, he's just, you know, he's, he's becoming a champion. That's, that's why he didn't do anything. Now, once you spend some time in the Volcano Manor and talk to him again, he's going to talk about 
how he hasn't achieved anything. He's dirtied his hands, he sullied the name of his house, and he still hasn't achieved anything, and he gave up on revenge also. So he feels like a fool, he's going through this existential crisis, and that's essentially what this quest is about. He's this guy from House Hoslow, he's got a reputation to uphold, he's trying to find his footing, but he's struggling to do that. What an easy mark I must have been. How did it take me so long to realize, honestly, there's just no end to my foolishness, is there? After you do the first assassination for the Volcano Manor and accept the second one, he's gonna become really disappointed, he feels like a fool, and after this he's gonna relocate to Jarberg. Now, where is Jarberg? There is this place very close to the Karian study hall. It's a small town almost that's just filled with these jars. And to get there, you're gonna have to drop down from the ledge and jump down onto some gravestones and that's how you're gonna get to the town. There you're gonna meet this little jar dude and he also has this quest line that ties into Dialos's quest line. And you'll have to advance and progress this quest to finish Dialysis questline. And of course, I'm going to talk about how to do that here. Hello, Cos. What are you doing here? I didn't think anyone knew about this place. Except us jars. Ah... Are you going to be the new potentate? Gosh, truly. That's wonderful news. It's not easy being potentate, though. I know. Show me your hands. It's just a little test, cuz. To see if you've got the right stuff. Hmm. Your skin isn't so smooth, is it? You need slick, slidey hands to be potentate, you know? I'm sorry, cuz. But I don't think you've got what it takes. What a shame. Now, this little jar buddy has don't a bunch of glad, dialogues. Cause. So, you, you need to make sure you've exhausted all of his dialogues. And to do this, just keep talking to him, rest at the side of Greystas in Jarberg, and then go back and talk to him, rest again, talk to him, and rest again, until you get to a point where he starts talking about poachers, and he's just gonna constantly repeat that. He's not gonna have any new dialogue after that one. Have you noticed the rare flowers growing in this village? I asked the villagers if you could pick some of them, and they said you'd be very welcome. Poacher is, cuz. They hunt us, smash us, and then take us away. This village is kept secret, so I think we're safe here. But you should be careful if you ever meet one of them, cuz. I hope Uncle Alexander beats them all up first. Another thing that you need to know Most is you need to at least progress Alexander's questline a little bit or at the very least meet him in the festival of war and at the side of grace after you've killed General Radon. You need to at least do that to be able to continue this quest. Now at this point if you've progressed Dialysis quest up to the point where he leaves the Volcano Manor and you've progressed this quest up until this point, if you rest and reset the area, Dialysis is gonna be in one of the shacks in Jarburg and he's gonna tend to one of the jars. What you want to do here is exhaust Dialysis' dialogues and exhaust this Jar Dude's dialogues, reset the area, and then keep on going until they have no new dialogues. Now, at this point, if you have defeated General Radon and talked to Alexander, once you reset the area again, Jarberg will be attacked, and once you come back, you will see the aftermath of the attack. Now, if you've done everything right and Jarberg has still not been attacked, one thing you could do is go back to the battlefield where you fought Radon, go back to that side of Grace, rest there, and come back. That will probably fix it. If that didn't fix it, probably find Alexander in Mount Gilmir and talk to him there. That can also fix it. And sometimes, uh, for me, killing Rykar is what triggers the attack on Jarberg. Ah, 
here. Are the jars... Are they all right? <coughs> Did I defend them? Then all is well. This fool proved his worth. In the end. Oh! Cuz! I'm glad you came. But we're fine now. Dialos fought the poacher, though quite a lot of us got broken. <laughs> I won't cry, though. I'm a warrior, Jar. A warrior. The tale of House Hoslo is told in blood. That's the kind of warrior I want to be one day, cuz. Even if I'm scared, I'll still fight to protect everyone. The tale of House Hoslo, that's the kind of one who... Now at this point, if you rest again, you can go back to Dialis's body. There you can find his whip, his mask, and one Newman's rune, which is worth 12,500 roots. After this, you can talk to the Jar again, and he's gonna talk about how he wants to go on a journey and become a strong warrior like Alexander, like Dialos. And at this point, the only thing left to do is finishing Alexander's quest line. And after you do that, you'll get this item called Alexander's Inroot. Once you come back and give that item to this jar, he will leave for that journey to become a warrior, and in his place, you will get the companion jar talisman. As a warrior jar, upon the path of champions. Okay, Knight Bernal. The first time you meet this guy, it's gonna be in the Warmaster's shack. This is east of the Stormvale Castle. And he is an Ash of War merchant. He sells you Ashes of War. Not seen you before. Name's Bernard. Tarnished, just like you. Right here, you can attack him and kill him, and he will drop the Devourer Scepter, the Beast Champion Set, and his Bellberry. Once you make it to the Volcano Manor you will also find Bernal. There you will find out that he has become one of the recusants and he is hunting other tarnished. After you complete the second assassination for the Volcano Manor, you can go back and talk to Bernal. He says, look at you, I knew you, you had it in you, you're a real recusant. And then he's gonna give you a letter. This is gonna be an invitation to assassinate two new targets together. Of course, the location for these targets is gonna be tagged on your map, it's in Lainville, the capital. Once you get there, there's gonna be a summon sign on the ground. You will use it, and then with Bernal, you will invade another world and kill the targets together. Once you've done this, you will be rewarded with the Raging Wolf set. And then right after that, you can go back to the Volcano Manor and talk to Bernal, and he will reward you with the Gelmir's Fury. Now, keep in mind, if you kill Rykard, if you finish the entire questline for the Volcano Manor and kill Rykard, Bernal will leave the Volcano Manor and you will lose this assassination attempt. What this means is you're not gonna get the Raging Wolf set, and also you're gonna get Gelmir's Fury at the end of his quest. Now, once you kill Rykard, he's gonna move out to the Volcano Manor. If you're worried about the Ashes of War, he's gonna leave his sword beside the chair in Volcano Manor, and you can still approach that sword and interact with it, and there you can still buy his Ashes of War. strong take, such is our code. Even he was prepared to meet a wretched end when he first took blasphemy unto his very flesh. But any road, the Volcano Manor is no more. Though we may yet fulfill an old promise. We hunted our own kind, and took what was theirs. And with everything in hand, the time has come to rise against the Erd Tree. 
he himself is gonna move to the crumbling Faramazula. There he's gonna be an available summon for the Godskin dual boss fight and you can summon him to help you. Other than that he's gonna be an invader that will invade you uh, in a location pretty close to the beside the Great Bridge site of Grace in the crumbling Faramazula. Once you beat him here you're gonna get his armor set, the Devourer Scepter and also the Blasphemous Claw which is a pretty useful item for the Malekith boss fight. You can parry the Black Blade in the Malekith boss fight with this item. And also, if you killed Rykard and did not do the assassination in the capital with him, you're also gonna get Gelmir's Fury here. And that's gonna be it for Bernal's questline. That's it for part 2. Hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, consider liking and subscribing. Also let me know if I got anything wrong or I missed anything. And there will be the link to part 1 in the description of this video. But that's it for now. Until next time. Peace.